You then transferred to the Chicago office of Warner Brothers. Yeah, Leon Blumberg fired me. But somebody in the front office liked me, Mr. Blumenstock, Mort Blumenstock. And I got kicked upstairs. I was sent to Warner Brothers in Chicago. They had a thriving little office there in the film center, 13th and Wabash. Do you remember why you were fired? We just never got along. And I think when the opportunity came for him to, to get rid of me, he jumped on it. But I went from $15 a week to 40 which was a lot of money in those days. And what was your role in Chicago? Publicist, junior publicist. I met all the trains. There were seven train stations in Chicago. I met all the stars. I'd take them to the color studios. The Chicago Tribune had a big color studio in their Sunday newspaper. We usually get the cover. Whenever anybody else, whenever anybody was coming through, I'd let Eddie Johnson know. Uh, who was Eddie Johnson? Eddie Johnson was the, they call him the three-in-one color studio man. It was a special section of the Chicago Tribune, Hollywood mostly like the L.A. Sunday Times has a calendar section. Who were some of the stars that you worked with? Well, all the, all the reigning stars stopped at Chicago. Some of them were on their way on their vacations. Some of them were on... Uh, some of them were on vacations. Some of them were just traveling. Some of them were on assignment. There was a big movie that year in 30, 1941 called Sergeant York, and everybody worked like hell on that picture. It was a Gary Cooper movie. Pretty good, too. Now, who were some of the uh, stars that you worked with in, in Chicago? I met Cooper. I met everybody. Humphrey Bogart, his wife then, Mio, Mio Mitho, Lauren Bacall, Betty Davis, a girl named Brenda Marshall, the leading lady in Sergeant York who was Joan Leslie. She was 16 years old then. Um, apparently everybody. No lasting friendships. Any interesting incidents? Yes, Betty Davis's ermine coat was stolen. There was a bit, bit of a problem there. She was very upset, and deservedly so. Any problems? Errol Flynn came off the plane, off the train, drunk, and demanded to be taken to a steam bath. He just finished a movie called They Died With Their Boots On, in which he played General Custer. In the uh, train station, there was a bunch of eggs I don't know if you've seen this lately. I don't think so, but the hard-boiled eggs and sometimes regular eggs are pyramided as a display. I haven't seen it lately. I haven't seen it in years. And Flynn picked up an egg, tapped me on the head with the egg, knowing full well it was not hard-boiled, and it slid down my $40 camel hair coat. He was bad news. How was, he, how was the press with him? Did you have to? The press loved him. He had an image of being a picaresque bad boy. He had an insatiable appetite for teenage girls. He was always in the papers and almost went to jail, but while, didn't. While you were there? While you, while you, he was in uh, Chicago? Well, that was in during the war, actually.